Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the diesel shop. Today we're just going to do a quick little video on some gas welding. So we're going to be using our oxyacetylene torch here. We have it all set up already. If you haven't witnessed how to set it up before, I'll refer back to the oxyacetylene cut-in video. Show you how to set up the torch, how to change out the heads and everything. So we got our torch all set up here. We got our acetylene set 5 to 7 PSI. We got our oxygen set about 20 25 PSI. We don't need a lot of oxygen for this because we're not using the oxygen to cut through the metal to blow it out of the way. What we're going to be doing, just using our little torch head here, used for brazing and soldering normally, but we could also use it for an old type of fusion welding called, you know, oxyacetylene welding. What we're actually going to be doing is taking our metal two pieces here, and we're just going to be actually melting the metal together, just a little fusion weld together there. So we're not going to be using any filler rod or anything, so it's not the strongest weld, but it's a good way to practice your torch skills and stuff. This is how they used to weld stuff back together, you know, back in the day. The problem with this type of welding is it uses a lot of heat. It's not very controlled. It's not very strong because there's no flux or anything that we're using. Another form of fusion welding we use today is TIG welding. So instead of using our torch, we would use the tungsten electrode with electricity going through it. And we'd actually melt the metal, you know, fuse the two pieces together. So... This is basically the same as TIG welding, just the you know, old school version of it here. So let's get suited up, we'll get started here. I'm just gonna be using lighter gloves today. I don't need my big heavy ones because I'm not gonna be that close to the heat on this here, like I am when I'm cutting. Also, I'm just gonna be using my little tinted glasses here. These are shade five glasses. I do have a face shield standing by just in case it starts spitting and sputtering or anything on me but I should be fine with my little glasses for today. I have on my work boots, have on you no know, long sleeves, flame resistant clothing here. So let's get started. So with this here, it's crucial our metal's nice and clean because we're not using any flux or anything. So make sure your metal's as clean as you can get it. We're just using a couple of these little small scrap pieces today. Like I said, this isn't the strongest type of weld, but it's a good way to see the fusion of metal together and it's a good way to practice your torch skills. So again, we're using just our regular little torch tip here, and we're just gonna be kinda fusing it together. I'm gonna kinda tack weld it down here, melting this end together, and I'm gonna switch to this end, kinda tack weld that together, and then I'm gonna go down through and kinda push my puddle going through there. So I don't know how good you'll be able to see it on the video, but through my tinted glasses, I'll be able to watch the actual pooled metal go back and forth, get pushed down through there. I'm going to be taking my torch tip. I'm going to be kind of making little zigzags or little C's down through there, kind of just fusing the two pieces of metal together. I'm just working from the one side over to the other, back and forth down through there. I might do a little arc, might do some W's. Depends how the metal's working today. So we'll get our torch lit up here. Okay, so we have our little striker. We'll light up our torch. We'll subtly light it up. Add our oxygen to it. We want that feather to come back nice there. So we want that nice burn right there. We want the, you know, the feather all the way back there. Nice neutral flame, nice hot flame. I'll throw my gloves on here. Okay, now I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna pull this little metal. So there's a lot of heat that comes off this work here. So that's why I have it sitting on this other piece of steel kind of off the table a little bit. I should have it over on the cutting table, but the light's not the best over there. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna kind of just melt the steel. So I can see it starting to melt together there for me. It's working back and forth. I got my one end tack there. I'll go down to the other end here. Again, you want nice clean metal, as clean as you can get it. There's no flux or anything to make a nice little barrier there for us. Okay, so I got my two ends fused together. Now I'm just gonna go down through and kind of melt the rest of it together here. So I'm actually gonna turn up my torch a little bit more a little more heat out of her there. Okay. 
So you normally want your torch on kind of a 45 degree angle, but you play around with it a little bit as you go. You can push or pull going down through here. And you're kind of just watching it through your tinted glasses. You can see the metal actually melting and fusing together as we go down through there. So that was a quick little weld down through there. So remember our mountain point of steel is 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So this torque right now with this tip on here is a little over 5,000 degrees. So it works pretty quick to actually melt it together. You can see there, we got a quick little weld down through there. The two pieces of metal fused together. I'll switch over to the other side over here. Okay, I threw a green shade over my camera real quick here. One of the cut in mask I just put over top of it. We'll see if you can see a little better through there. Cut down on some of the, you know, bright light and stuff that's coming off of there for you. So I'll light up my torch again here. Again, we'll light our acetylene first. We'll turn it up a little bit higher here. We'll add our oxygen nice and slow. You see the feathers start to come back there. You want to get that cone feather all the way back, just so it's a little tiny cone coming out of there. So right there, that's a nice neutral flame right there, and it brought all the way back. So now we're gonna go, and we're gonna just, again, we already have the one side all done, so we don't have to tack it again. We're gonna kind of just go down through here, make little C's across there as we go. I'm just gonna run over this real quick, burn off any of the oils or anything that are on here, little residues left over. And when we heat it up the other side, some of that stuff might sweat through to this side here. So, got that burn off here. Now I'll get going again here. Again, kind of a 45 degree angle. We're just going down through there. We could actually see the metal melt together, fuse together both sides of it. Sometimes if you might get a little impurity there where it'll bubble up on you kind of weird. Remember, we're not using any flux or anything, so a lot of contaminants in this metal. That's why it's not a very strong weld. Put down our torch. You can see our metal's really hot there still. Grab a pair of players for this so I don't melt our gloves here. So you can see we're nicely fused together there. Like I said, it's not the strongest weld. If I whack this hard with a hammer, it'd probably break apart here. Let me pull the lens off here. Get a better look at it here. So you can see there, the metal's kind of pulled. The two sides are fused together. You can see we had a lot of heat transfer over into our work. We had a lot of heat going down into our table. So just be aware of that when you're using this type of weld here. It's more for practice and stuff nowadays. Be good with a torch. Then you can go through with a brazen rod or solder and add to it behind there. So check out the solder and brazen video to, you know, how to do that. But, you know, this will kind of help you out there a little bit. So that's all for today. Just a quick little video there. Hope you got something out of it. Have fun.